how's it going ladies and gentlemen it's nasi pizwane back with another episode of sludge underground podcast and today i've got another awesome awesome guest for you uh one of the best in the land this is the first time we have ever had an artist all the way from venda or originating from there so we're going to be finding a lot more about him my brother please introduce yourself and let the people know what it is that you do and what you you're all about yo thank you so much for that beautiful intro um so my name is jida art and i'm a vendor creative uh mostly make beats and shoot videos and just yeah just be creative you know any thing i can put my hands on to you know just try out and just express myself yeah jida art is is very I, it automatically takes me to France. I know this is something we've touched on, you know, previously as well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, what's that connection there? What basically brought about that sort of French inspiration within the name? Uh so the name, the name Jira Art came from. I wanted to. I was trying to like do um a clothing line. So that was the name of the clothing line. So like the guy who like first had my beats, uh, I named one of the beats Jira Art, and he started calling me Jira Art from that day and. You know, it just it sounded cool, and I was like, I liked it. You know, because you know, I wanted to be the brand. You know, so it just ended up working perfectly for me because now I'm in a place where I shoot videos, I do most of my work. So it just it came full circle because that was the bigger plan. It's gonna do clothing, I was gonna do this and that. You know, I want to do everything I can. So yeah. Are you still doing the whole clothing thing, and also the homie? You know, that basically sent you the beat, or the one that basically was instrumental in you basically getting this name. Are you guys? Is he still around? Um, no, 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 not clo- I'm just more f- focused on fashion, like now, and like just expressing myself through like other people's. You know, I'm I'm embracing that. You know, like. I think it didn't really work out for me, you know, like I just ended up falling more in love with the music. So, yeah, like that's where the lane that I'm in right now. And the guy who gave me the name, Ish, I you know how it goes. No, I don't know how it goes, bro. It's me. <laughs> Ish, I know we just had a fallout, you know, like, yeah, we just had a fallout and it was it was not fixable. So, you know, we just went our separate ways, but... You know, like just looking back, I'm grateful for like everything it did. But ever since I've just started literally being hands on with all my stuff, I've just been doing better for myself. So for the full scoop, uh, get GDR's book. It's coming out next month. Um, <laughs> it's it's got the entire story in it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll definitely put it in the book because it's it's yo, know, it's crazy. I'm pretty sure you've come across some some hectic experiences as well being a musician. You know, maybe some backstabbing here and there. What would you say the most like hectic thing? that has sort of made you question being a musician? Ah, no, I've never, like, encountered that. I've not, like, I've never, there's never been anything that has discouraged me because I really have just been making beats since grade nine and, like, I've never stopped. You know, I'll obviously have times where there's a period of time that I will not be doing it, but I'm always doing it, you know, and I'm always dropping projects. Like, as much as I'm on my sixth EP now, I have, yo, I have tons of things I've produced. I have a lot of content on the internet. So I, I've never like met something that has discouraged me, except people, you know, like sometimes you meet people, like, you know, people who you like consider your idols or you look up to and you just realize that, you know, damn, niggas are fake. It just makes me question everything, you know, like, damn, like what's real, you know, someone can, you can literally make a song with someone they could literally tell you that, yo, like we like the song, blah, blah, let's do it. And then you wonder why the songs never get never gets released, you know. You know, you just get into this rabbit hole of not understanding. But you know, that's just how it goes. So that would be the one thing. This seems to be a very common pattern that with what you just mentioned now about yeah. you know you'll work on a song with an artist and then they don't release it. It reminds me of something that P Dog once said. Shout out P Dog, um, who basically said um, he put up a post one day and he was like, listen. It's yeah. a brand new year. I'm on some different tip now. I'm on I'm on to new things. If mm. you and I, if you asked for my verse within the last 12 months and you haven't released it, cut it off. Yeah. Don't even release it at all. What is it about artists that makes them do that? Would you have any insights on that at all? Yeah, I have a lot of insight. <laughs> no, I think it's like uh, people like they just pretend to like you, you know, like the, the thing about like when you meet someone face to face, you know, like if I bump into you and I'm like, you know, if maybe on the internet we would be speaking and we vibing and like we meet in person, it's like, okay, now I got to keep, keep up with that, you know, whole thing. And 
but deep down you're not really fucking with this person or you you have a fear that this person is better than you you know because sometimes it's really just that like it's like i'm scared of this person knowing how much i fuck with the person you know like i think it's more of an ego thing i think that's what happens you know like sometimes you don't want to do a song with someone because you fear that if i do it and release it that this person is gonna be bigger than me or like it could be a situation of like i'm trying to keep up you know with that appearance on social media but when i go home and like i'm just i don't really like the song but i'm not gonna tell you because if i tell you it really just shows you who i am you know so i'll just like keep delaying saying oh man let's give it some time you know because that's what usually happens you'll ask the first time and they'll be like um they'll just tell you stories so like one thing i did right like i just learned like in the game is i just I, like now i'm in a space where i pay for everything i do you know like it's just something i just had to figure out you know real like if i really want to get my projects done I have to put money like that's the only thing if you show them money they'll do it without even blinking as someone that is on their sixth ep now this clearly shows and you've been you know making beats since like grade nine you know it clearly shows that you're very consistent and you're about this you're not just doing this uh because you know it's part of the wave or whatever the case is one of the tips that you just dropped right now that i feel is very important is that you're outsourcing you know anything that you can't do yourself you're going out there and you're paying other people to do it for you, which is absolutely brilliant. I feel like it's a testament to you, to that longevity, you know, being able to do this so long. It's one of the things that you've learned in your journey as well. And sort of in conjunction with what you were telling me now about, you know, artists being fake, people, you know, sort of having ulterior motives and such and trying to keep up appearances. Are there any other tips that you could give for anyone that's an artist or an upcoming artist in order for them to be the best version of themselves? Because you don't want someone coming up and then being shady and then being basically the embodiment of the person that you just described now. So besides going out and outsourcing and paying people for their work, which is a very brilliant point, what other things has the journey sort of taught you, bro, um, that you could pass on to anyone else that's striving to be as dope as you are? Everyone says this, you know, literally just staying in your lane, like not trying to be like someone else. Because one thing I've honestly like just realized, you know, like social media, you know, plays a, a, a huge role in like artists and, you know, like how, how we put our music out and everything. And if you know how to use that platform very well, you know, and use it to get to your people, you know, that's really that. If you focus on your niche, like the people like me, I just focus on everyone who is currently listening now, like. You know, that's why I'm called, like, sometimes I drop a project and have, like, a few streams, but, like, for me, it's not about that. I'm literally catering to the people. I'm staying in my lane because I know, or, like, you know, if these people like my song, they'll go tell the next person and that, no. Like, the people who have been listening to my music have been listening since day one. Like, I've just always had people, like, it's the same. Like, it's growing, but, like, I still have the same people, you know, that consistency, you know, so... I think that's what's important. Don't try now to go and do something else. And it's like, that's dangerous because it's not what it seems, you know, like an artist can have a million followers, but that stuff could be like generated by AI or whatever record companies use nowadays to manipulate everything, to make us think that, you know, so that's just how I think about these things when I just make the songs. It's like, I just need to just stay true, stay in my lane. Because I know when I drop a song, someone is going to text me and you'll be like, and that's enough for me to just keep going. Everything else will just continue going. That's just me in a nutshell. Very solid advice. Bro, I'd like you to tell us a bit more about the Vendor Realty EP, which is out now. Yeah. For someone who's been doing six EPs, man, you know, who has released six EPs to the world, how is this one different from the rest? Oof, this one, I, I was in a good place in my life. Like, that's the why it's different and... Like, I've, even till now, you know, I'm still in a good space because it's actually started as um, a visual project. Like, I have a visual project out on YouTube called Highs and Lows. So I think that part was me transitioning from the from the lows to the highs. So, like, I just had made four tracks, which are literally the last four tracks of the EP. And, yeah, like, I think that later that year I went to Venda and I was just driving around Venda and I came back and, like, from driving around and I made a beat called Concentration. I think it's the second song and yeah that's what like just stirred everything up you know i was like damn like okay you know like i love the sound i love where i'm at let me just continue and i just continued making music until the last until i was happy with every song i got you know and yeah like yeah that's how it happened you know when you speak of vendor you remind me of uh an interview that i did you know with one of the with one of uh, the previous guests um shania 
who um, is basically from, I think she was from Limbombo, yeah. She was from Limbombo, and she was basically saying, I was asking her, I'm like, why don't you ever hear much about the place when it comes to sort of like music and such? And she basically said that, you know, the only sort of, sort of news outlet that they have is sort of like one newspaper that covers everything within Limbombo. Well, that's within the pop realm or the type of genre that she's doing. And it sort of made sense as to why we don't really hear much about it when it comes to that part of, you know, music in Limbombo. I want to know why we never really hear much about Venda because, yo, it, it, things seem very, it's not as in your face as, say, maybe like a Joburg, a Durban, or a Cape Town and such, you know. Why is Venda so quiet in comparison to those others? No, honestly speaking, uh, that's a good question. I also, I have for as well, you know, because... And I honestly thought that, I don't know if you know Mankazi, like, yes, she was going to really put us on the map for real, you know, like, like on a, on like, yo, like the biggest scale ever, because she was doing Nickelodeon, she was doing this, you know. So now I'm literally seeing on the news that she's fighting with a label, you know, so I'm just, I'm, it's just, I know when artists start fighting with labels, ah, uh, that's, that's it, you know, like. It's the end. Is King Manada not from there as well? No, 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 no. I think it's from Devel or something. Like, he's... Oh, yeah, from Limpompo. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and he's doing good. He's doing good, but I, that guy's just doing his own thing. <laughs> like GD Art is doing his own thing. Yeah. yeah, he's just enjoying life. I like I like his vibe. Look, I, yo, I love that guy, like, so much. Like, yo, I love the way he's so free-spirited. He doesn't care. Like, he's just... That's what I mean by like staying in your own lane. That's exactly what I mean. Like someone like that, like he's doing good for himself. He's not in the media for the wrong things. He's taking care of his family, he's building houses, you know, like that's a nigga that's focused. So like if you stay in your lane, you don't try compete with people because you don't know like who's like ish, this thing, like this thing is just now that there's even AI, I'm scared. I'm scared. No, I'm scared for artists, you know. Listen, we're going to touch on AI and why you're scared. I want to know what, what it would take for for GDR to get to where Makadzi was before obviously fighting with the label. What would it take for you to become sort of the face of Venda as an artist? I know, like, uh, that one, like, I can't answer because, like, I've never, like, I didn't grow up from Venda or, like, I've never, like, necessarily seen myself as... I just embrace it. Like, that's the only thing, you know, I just embrace where I'm from. I grew up in Joburg and like, as I, I never, I grew up making music with like a lot of people, you know, and I just only got introduced to vendor artists just recently, you know, and yeah, it's it's been working for me in a good way because, you know, I'm making music with my brothers. So that's the best thing, you know, like, hey, you want to make music with your brothers. So I just want all of Venda to shine, you know, like, I don't think it's an individual thing. I don't think it's a me thing. I just feel like we should all work together. But, you know, just judging the way things are in Venda, just, you know, just being around places. Like, I don't think we're going anywhere soon because there's just a lot going on, a lot of competition. It's a small place, you know, like small places, like if, if there the becomes too much competition, it just kills everything. You know, you need to be behind one face. Like I was born in Vendane, but after two years, we moved to Joburg. And this was like maybe 96. We moved to Joburg in 96 and moved to Bloom in 2003. And we moved back to Joburg in 2009. So I've been in Joburg like that whole time. So I've never really stayed in Venda, I'll just visit. But, you know, like like I'm saying, I really, like, because my family is, like, very traditional and everything. That's why even the new project, I'm literally, that's how, that's how I embrace it. You know, I put it on my projects and everything, you know, just to show that love, you know. Like, I wouldn't just go name my project, be pushing something else, you know, putting a message out that's not from where I come from. So, yeah. Yeah, is it is it is Joburg a lot better though in terms of maybe some of the other places like you've been to, say Bloemfontein and such? Like, how is the Joburg experience? Is it as easy as people say? Like with you being a musician that's based there, you know, and hearing maybe other artists from Durban or Cape Town or wherever saying, "Hey, Joburg is where I want to go because the scene is a lot better there." Is it a lot better there? Hell yeah! Especially if you're an artist, you know, getting yourself in those studio session is also like important, like networking, like. Because even me, like, I had to first, before I became the person I am, I had to first get out there, you know. So, so now I don't have to get out there because I already did that part, you know, just meeting people, going to events, going to studio sessions. You know, that's how you really get to. So, hey, definitely. And in Joburg, there's a high concentration of artists, and, you know, 
and there are people who are genuinely who are genuine who genuinely want to help as well you know like that's the other thing so hey jobek i really if you're really like serious dead serious and you want to like really do it you can do it you like you really can you just push yourself in those positions you know like yeah Because now I don't feel like me the way I'm at now like I don't think that's where I'm at right now putting my like I'm more into just doing my own thing you know because I've already done that you know mm, 100% earlier on you mentioned that you are afraid of AI so tell me what your sort of reservations are about that like what is it that scares you about AI uh, in relation to the artist in 2023 okay like as for a producer you know like what if AI start making better beats so we like kind of fucked because there was a song by the weekend that and drake that leaked and when i heard it i was like damn this is actually fire you know like damn if they can do something that perfect because beat making is not all about perfection you know it's all about just going from like how you feel and everything like you really need to be creative to make beats so it's gonna kill the creative creativity you know like as well it's gonna that the most as especially you know the creativity it's, it's going to kill it mm, do you not feel like there could be an element of ai assisting maybe more of an enhancement on your creative procedure i'm going to make an example with podcasting i recently um trevor anderson shout out trevor anderson recently sent me sent me a link um and it was this video basically of this editing software or this ai podcast editing software and i looked at that and i'm like <laughs> this literally i literally sit for like 2 3 4 hours editing an episode and then i look at that and i'm like well if it's effective why not try it if you can edit an entire episode in like 10 minutes or whatever perfect right so do you feel like there's anything for you as a producer that you could utilize ai to sort of enhance what you doing or would you say that it's mainly just all negative oh no no it's definitely positive as well you know like i just i just believe that you know everything is positive and negative people are trying to really make money out of this thing you know like are the ones who are going to feel it the most but it does have its benefits you know it'll, if it makes things easier then i'm i'm definitely for it as well you know if it makes life easier i just feel like it just kills that element of creativity that human you know cuz i just believe like as human we can feel each other so like you know once ai starts getting involved like the energy the rhythm and everything the frequencies like it's gonna mess all of that up uh give me sort of like a top 3 south african artists that you'd like to work with currently or in future and why those artists um it's aka number 1 aka number 2 aka number 3 is this something that was there before he passed away as well or is it sort of more like even more now that he's gone hey, it's been there since day one you know like you can't be someone who listens to hip hop in SA and like growing up especially and not have like yo like it's he's just like and it's just his music is undeniable you know like you can't just hate you can't ignore it you know So like for me like the fact that like I love his beats like I love his beats before anything you know cuz he used to make beats for Kulichana so like that's how I knew him you know so like just getting to know him as a person like also I like the fact that like he's vulnerable you know like I feel like artists need to like the fact that he's so willing to be like I like I just like everything about him like he's he's like it's not just only the music but the way he carries his he carries himself you know like like obviously the positive things you know like yeah he does influence me a lot especially with beats i have a lot of inspirations but like you know if you to name essay yeah i'll definitely you know mention him mm. internationally yo yeah i know there's a lot i don't think there's just a lot of people i'd love to work with like honestly speaking i don't even have a list like do you know like how black coffee like uh, does his features like he literally working with anyone in any genre like that's that's where i want to be like yeah like this i don't want to just obviously stick to hip hop i want to get to a day where i can just make a alternative album where i have a hip hop artist and i have a singer on one song or and then i have a a rock. like yeah i want to have a lot of flavors in one song you know that's where i'm trying to get to so i can literally work with anyone you know it makes it makes sense you're very versatile you yeah. fit into any sort of genre yeah. yeah that makes 100% sense one of the last questions that i have for you is you come from a traditional family as you say you know they still got that vendor tradition within them and they still do the practices and all that there 
um you know what's their reaction to you making you know being a producer making music i'm sure they're happy you're embracing that vendor sort of culture as well but besides that you know um are they how do they feel about you being a musician um my my family like my mom and dad are supportive they obviously started not understanding it but you know like they just saw it and they just saw the moves i was making as well you know i feel like the moves more than anything convinced them about you know like they okay they can see that at least i'm doing something you know just besides school and everything else you know at least he has a hobby or he has something that he's passionate about back then when i was like growing up if there was like they would all like yo come dj for us you know they would like he's a dj come dj for us they would always do that and that's how they see me so that's good and obviously something that we also previously touched on a bit um is that you know the moves that you're making and i can see this is inspired by you you know making your own moves and sort of being within your own lane mentioned you know articles by you know text shout out uh tecla doing the most out there you know the platforms that you approach uh, and the platforms that basically showcase some of your stuff you know how do you sort of curate that is that is it like a is that like an informed decision or is it sort of like you identify them and you're like yo i'm gonna push my stuff to these guys do they like how do you sort of go about doing that instead of going for just the mainstream stuff and radio and all that yeah so like with that it's basically it'll be on the project like it'll be like what i want the project to do where i want it to go you know for example like how i reached text and the city was through a project that i literally called art quality museum boys and the platform was all about art and everything so it like made perfect sense you know so i first obviously see the market like where is this gonna be more appreciated you know sometimes i literally would even make projects for like because there's a lot of kids from venda who like my like ratchet type of stuff music you know so i would literally just even drop mixtapes for them and literally make sure it gets exactly to them you know like through the because i know they like audio make a lot so i'll literally just go and put it out there like i I know my people like i know what people want to listen to i know what they want from me you know so i just that's how i just uh curate everything i wouldn't just obviously even like now with the ep i'm making you know like i'm i'm kind of in a i'm kind of stuck you know because i'm still trying to figure out how it's gonna sound you know if things are not going well with the recording you know people are dropping me you know it always happens you know like people just let me down but yeah we'll figure it out you know with time i'll find new people and the project will definitely be done it's just always a thing of a matter of time you know it'll not be now but it will happen eventually uh, you know golden things i'm picking up there is obviously knowing your audience yeah you know you gotta know your audience you gotta know where they are yeah and you gotta be persistent and persevere as you mentioned people dropping you yeah uh, but you're able to to have that mindset that says yeah just because so and so dropped me it doesn't mean that things need to stop now i need to find other avenues to sort of continue with yeah. what i'm trying to do yeah. which is absolutely brilliant one of the things that i love about you as an artist and one of the reasons why i'm absolutely grateful we've had this conversation my brother i cannot yeah. thank you enough for joining me um for this chat are there any sort of parting words um that you'd like to to say upon anyone that's been listening uh to you and following your journey closely before we get your handles or anything at all that you want to say or want to touch on this is your opportunity to do so uh one thing i would just like to touch on was the last thing you mentioned about me, like uh, with uh, artists dropping me and all of that, you know, because I feel like that's a lot of thing that kills a lot of dreams, you know, because I could have had, so there's so many times that I felt like quitting, you know, and because, you know, someone made me feel some type of way or whatever, the way people treated me, you know, but, you know, when I look now, I really just thank myself because like, I'm really doing good for myself, you know, and having fun, doing what I'm doing. I don't have any pressure. You know, like just that mindset, you know, is important. So like, yo, don't ever let people like, you know, they always say this, but it's really true because this really happens. You know, a lot of people, you can literally go to like, I literally been in a studio session, like where people are telling me my beats were, my beats were work. But when I look now, like, and I look where everyone is, you know, it's, it's, it's a different story, you know? So I'm just thankful that I didn't let something like that get to me as well, you know? So yeah, that's like one thing I really just want to like the fact that you mentioned it, you know, about me and I just realized that damn. So yeah, the important thing is like pay for everything you do. Like just everyone just cares about the money. So I'll give you the money, you know, just give me the verse or just do this for me, you know, I'm so I can get the project done and we move forward and we don't have to like each other or anything, you know, it's because, you know, if you do favors now, you need to like 
this person, even though you don't like this person. But if you just do your stuff the right way, the way everyone does it, like this is how like record companies move. They pay for everything they do as well. So that's like one thing about being an independent artist. You gotta also move like that. Very solid advice, as they always say, or as the saying goes, it's just business. It's not personal. Yeah, it's just one word. It's literally just business. It's nothing personal. One hundred percent, my brother. Give the people your handles where people can get in touch with you and where we can find your music and all that there. Oh, uh, so uh, they can just follow me on g at g underscore dot uh, d a r t. On um on all uh, Twitter and uh, IG, and then my music is just G the Art on all platforms. Like oh, the website is actually on my handle, on my uh, bio on uh, IG. That's where my website is. Or Twitter. That's where you'll be able to access everything I do, my music. Yo, I have, I have a lot. You know, even if you just go on Google and search G the Art, stuff will pop up. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is perfect. And I'll also be leaving some of the links as well in uh, the description of this episode. Uh, for all things Sludge Underground, it's www.sludgeunderground.com. That is our website. It's on social media, Instagram, at Sludge Underground. On Twitter, at Sludge Earthy One. On Facebook, Sludge Underground. Please do go out and get merch. That is the best way that you can support us. We've got some amazing beanies that are out right now. 125 and a pop. Do get them uh, at your earliest convenience. It's getting cold out there, guys. So, best get to it now obviously my brother we did talk about vendor royalty uh being the ep that you released right now yeah. what song are we are we playing out with from the project um we did our ending please say that again for me bro i know i'm gonna butcher it we did our ending it's like a love song <laughs> we done that in it yo oh my goodness <laughs> i'm so bad i'm so bad i'm so bad Not too long after we recorded this episode, GDR contacted me and said, Listen, man, I love the song that I requested on the show, but at the same time, I want to put the people onto some brand new music that is absolutely unreleased. So what you guys are listening to right now is a spring day. So do enjoy it. You're hearing it first. Until next time, it's bye for now. Go dang, I'm gonna be guided, no more than there to take your time, but I'm no pressure. The way your body looking extra, so go to the no more sets, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm Spring day better flowers, summer rain, a gentle breeze. Touch you like we've been apart too long, my mental peace. Tight wrist got me thinking about some kids that we should make. Build out, then ground up, you brought my joy, renewed my faith. I don't fuck a duva, it's a ambi ni ngari Ote he a kanda, but yo seja a chivir Tenga voy no tu a ti ni hawe a un andir Miss you from the moment that you left, I don't redeal Before I even call, I know you're about it We need some time alone, my mind's been crowded Just call your mama, give you my last name Attracted to your aura, your past was full of lames I bring a new tomorrow, you're bringing me the same Yeah, please, it's on gold and I'm gonna need God And I'm in there to take your time without no pressure The way your body looking extra, so go to the no more sets I'm gonna go to my auto peasant Please, I'm going to go to God and I'm going to take your time, but I don't press you. The way your body looking extra, so go to the normal sets and goes out, go my old own pets. Saved your number down as wifey wife from day one. I can't see the future, take it daily as they come. Had a dream that you were picking dresses for our day. I'm not violent, but I let nothing in our space. I don't know the my demons, we go fire, I don't know more. Come to you when I'm in need of touch, I don't know. Ding off window to a teeny highway, I don't know. Miss you from the moment that you left, it was ridiculous.